Welcome to our latest video on the topic of reducing agents and the extraction of metals. This video is intended for GCSE students. By the end of this video lesson, you should be able to explain the meaning of the terms oxidation, reduction and reducing agent. You should also understand that metals can be extracted from their ores by heating with a reducing agent. In our last video, we discussed the fact that some metals, such as gold and silver, are found as elements, while other metals are found as compounds. And we said that a naturally occurring element or compound found in the Earth's crust is called a mineral. And any metal containing rock from which we can economically extract a metal is called an ore. Extraction is getting the metal from the metal ore. In our last video, we also discussed the relationship between a metal's reactivity and the ease at which it can be extracted from its ore. The least reactive metals are the easiest to extract from their ores. This is because these metals are found as elements and not compounds. So therefore, no chemistry is required to extract the metal from its metal ore. All we have to do is remove the metal from the rock that surrounds it. If we have a more reactive element, these are found as compounds and chemistry is required to extract the metal from the metal ore because the metal is chemically bound to another element. And if we have very reactive metals, such as potassium, sodium and aluminium, we require electricity to remove that metal from the metal ore. So in this video, we're going to look at how metals such as copper, lead, iron, zinc can be extracted from their ores. Now, these metals are below carbon in the reactivity series, and therefore it's possible to extract these metals by heating up the metal compound with carbon. And last lesson, we looked at displacement reactions, reactions where a more reactive element is able to kick out a less reactive element from a compound. So in this video, we're going to explore this method of extraction in a little more detail, and we're going to discuss the meaning of terms such as oxidation, reduction, and reducing agent. So let's start by looking at the meaning of the term oxidation. Now, lots of chemical reactions involve substances either gaining or losing oxygen. And an oxidation reaction happens when a substance gains oxygen. So if you look at the equation here, we have copper plus oxygen goes to copper oxide. This is an oxidation reaction because a substance has gained oxygen. Copper. Copper has gained oxygen. Copper has been oxidized. Copper is oxidized because it has gained oxygen to form copper oxide. So the opposite of oxidation is called reduction. And reduction happens when a substance loses oxygen. So if we look at the equation, we have lead oxide plus carbon goes to lead plus carbon dioxide. Now, in this equation, lead oxide loses oxygen to form lead. So the lead oxide has lost oxygen and is said to be reduced because reduction is a loss of oxygen. Now, when lead oxide loses oxygen, the carbon gains the oxygen. So the carbon takes the oxygen away from the lead oxide and is oxidized. So in this equation, we've got oxidation happening and reduction happening. Now, if we go back to the term displacement reaction, we could look at this equation and just think that really the carbon is kicking out the lead because it's more reactive. But if we look in terms of oxidation and reduction, we can see that in this equation, the carbon 
is causing the lead oxide to lose oxygen. It's causing the lead oxide to be reduced. So we call carbon a reducing agent. And a reducing agent is any substance that causes another to lose oxygen. Reducing agents don't have to be elements. They can be compounds. Because all a reducing agent is, is a substance that causes another to lose oxygen. And a reducing agent works because it is very good at gaining oxygen. So if you have an element or a compound that is good at gaining oxygen, it is able to steal oxygen away from another compound and cause that compound to be reduced. So a reducing agent is a substance that causes another to lose oxygen and it is itself very good at gaining oxygen. That's how it works. Now, as many metal ores contain metal oxides, reducing agents are commonly used to extract the metals. In the example here, we have copper oxide reacting with carbon. Now, carbon reacts with a copper oxide and acts as a reducing agent. It removes the oxygen from the copper oxide. The copper oxide is said to be reduced as it loses oxygen and forms copper metal. Now carbon is commonly used to extract copper from copper oxide and carbon takes many forms and one form is charcoal. Now if you heat up copper oxide with a sample of charcoal you will be left with copper metal and carbon dioxide gas. The carbon kicks out the copper from the copper oxide. It's more reactive than copper. And carbon here is acting as a reducing agent because it steals away the oxygen from the copper oxide. The copper oxide is reduced as it loses oxygen. The carbon gains oxygen and is oxidized to form carbon dioxide. Now in this excellent video from CLEAPS, we can see how this experiment could be carried out. So to carry out this experiment, all you need is a container to put the copper oxide and carbon on. And you can actually use a crown bottle top for this. And the crown bottle top can be attached to an iron wire. And then you need to weigh out the copper oxide and the carbon. And once you've done this, you then need to mix the copper oxide and carbon together. And once you've done this, you can pour the mixture onto the crown bottle top. So the next step is to place our bottle top that has our mixture of solids on it in a Bunsen burner flame. Now we have to heat it very, very strongly. So we place it in the hottest part of the Bunsen burner flame. And if we heat it for just a couple of minutes, we should find that the copper oxide has changed to copper. So heat it for a few minutes and then take it out of the Bunsen burner flame, cool it down by placing the bottle top on the surface of cold water. And then if we look at the bottle top, we should see some brown specks of solid formed on the bottle top. Now that brown solid is copper metal. So if you look at the video now, you can see the brown specks of copper metal has formed. And in this reaction, we've seen the carbon kick out the copper from copper oxide it is a displacement reaction because carbon is more reactive than copper. The carbon can be thought of as a reducing agent because it removes oxygen from copper oxide. So we're now going to look at another extraction of a metal. And this is an extraction of iron from iron ore. And it's a world famous reaction called the Fermite reaction. 
Now in this reaction, iron oxide is reacted with aluminium and you get iron and aluminium oxide. And it's called the fermite reaction because the reaction produces a tremendous amount of heat. The heat produced is so much that the iron you end up with is in a molten state. It's melted. And the melting point of iron is around 1500 degrees C. So that gives you an idea about how much heat is generated in this reaction. The reaction is very exothermic. So the reaction works by aluminium kicking out iron as it's more reactive. And this is a displacement reaction. And you're left with iron and aluminium oxide. Now in this reaction, iron oxide has lost oxygen to form iron, so iron oxide is reduced. Aluminium has gained oxygen to form aluminium oxide, so aluminium is oxidized. And the aluminium is a reducing agent because it's caused the iron oxide to lose oxygen and form iron. So we're now going to show you a video clip of the fermite reaction and this is courtesy of the University of Nottingham and their excellent periodic table of videos series. Talk me through what's going on mate. So instantly the thermite reaction starts and you can see that it's so hot it's burnt a hole through the bottom of that terracotta flower pot but if we go in close now Brady you can see all that really quite nice molten iron now that's so hot that the iron itself has melted and it's formed this although the fermite reaction does extract iron from iron ore it does remove the oxygen from iron oxide it is not used commercially on a large scale to produce iron this is because it wouldn't be economically viable to do this because you're using an expensive metal, aluminium, to extract a relatively cheap metal in iron. The reason aluminium is more expensive than iron is because it's a more reactive metal. And the more reactive a metal is, the harder it is to extract from its ore. Now the fermite reaction does have uses. For example, it's used to repair railway tracks if there is a crack in a railway track, all you have to do is put some aluminium and iron oxide into that crack and you would have a magnesium fuse. You would light the fuse, the fermite reaction would take place and liquid molten iron would form that would pour into the crack, it would cool down, it would solidify and you've repaired your railway line. Now, the fermite reaction is often used in exam questions because it's a great example of a more reactive metal, aluminium, kicking out a less reactive metal, iron, from a compound. If you want to extract iron on a large scale, you would not use aluminium. You would use a reducing agent such as carbon monoxide. Now, this process is called the blast furnace process, and we will cover this in later lessons. But in this process, iron oxide reacts with carbon monoxide and you form iron and carbon dioxide. The iron oxide loses oxygen to form iron and is reduced. The carbon monoxide gains oxygen to form carbon dioxide. And iron oxide goes to iron, is reduced by the carbon monoxide and carbon monoxide is called a reducing agent in this process because it steals oxygen from iron oxide to leave iron. The reason carbon monoxide is able to do this is because carbon monoxide is unstable and it readily reacts with oxygen to form carbon dioxide. That's what makes it a good reducing agent. So now let's test your understanding of what we discussed so far with some practice questions. Question one is asking you to explain the meaning of the following terms. A, reduction, B, oxidation, and C, reducing agent. And question two involves nickel oxide reacting with hydrogen to produce nickel and water. And it's asking you to name the reducing agent in this reaction. 
pause the video and have a go at these two questions. Now let's have a go at question three. Copper oxide reacts with carbon monoxide to produce copper and carbon dioxide. Part A is asking you which substance in the equation undergoes reduction. Give a reason for your answer and there's two marks for this. Part B is asking you which substance in the equation undergoes oxidation. Give a reason for your answer and there's two marks for this. And part C is asking you to name the reducing agent in this reaction and there's one mark for this. Pause the video and have a go at the question. So now let's go through the answers to these practice questions. For question one, we asked you to explain the meaning of the following terms. So reduction is a loss of oxygen, one mark for that. Oxidation is a gain of oxygen, one mark for that. And a reducing agent is a substance which causes another to lose oxygen. For question two, it's asking you to name the reducing agent. Well, the reducing agent is hydrogen because it causes nickel oxide to lose oxygen to form nickel. So now let's look at the answers to question three. So in question three, copper oxide was reacting with carbon monoxide to produce copper and carbon dioxide. And part A asked which substance in the equation undergoes reduction. Give a reason for your answer. Well, it's copper oxide because it loses oxygen to form copper. One mark for copper oxide, one mark for the explanation. Then it asks you which substance in this equation undergoes oxidation. Well, it's carbon monoxide as it gains oxygen to form carbon dioxide. And the last part is asking you to name the reducing agent where well, the reducing agent is carbon monoxide because carbon monoxide causes copper oxide to lose oxygen. So let's recap the lesson objectives to check that you've understood all the aims of the lesson. So by the end of this video lesson now, you should be able to explain the meaning of the terms oxidation, reduction and reducing agent. And you should also understand that metals can be extracted from their ores by heating with a reducing agent. So that concludes our video. Please check out our YouTube channel, Dr. Rowe Chemistry, and our Twitter site, which contains lots of chemistry information and links, at Radar Chemistry.